Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095. This is section 6.5, part 2. We're going to look at uh, working through some examples of solving linear inequalities. Before we do that, um, we're just going to define the difference between an equality or an equation and an inequality. Now, we've solved many of equations so far uh, in these video lectures. And I'm sure you know how to do these, but we're going to work through this one and just see what we get. So in order to solve this, I'm going to undo my order of operations. The first thing I'm going to do is subtract 4 from both sides, because my overall goal is to get x by itself. So 4 minus 4 goes away. So that just leaves us with the negative 2x, because 4 minus 4 is 0. 6 minus 4 is 2. Now, to get x by itself, I have to undo this multiplication. I'm going to divide by this coefficient. Well, the coefficient is a negative 2. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And negative 2 over negative 2 is a positive 1. So we had a negative value on this side. And by dividing by that negative 2, now it's positive. On this side, we had a positive value. And we divided it by negative 2. So now we're going to get a positive over a negative is a negative value. And 2 over 2 is 1. So x equals negative 1 is the solution to this equation. That would make it true. And I could check my work, plug it in. Negative 1 times negative 2 is, in fact, uh, positive 2 plus 4 is 6. 2 plus 4 is 6. That's a true statement. Now, when it comes to an inequality, we can treat it the exact same way we did there. We're going to use our properties of equality. What we do to one side, we do to the other. There's only going to be one difference. And it's something that we have to pay close attention to. So if I'm going to solve this, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So I get negative 2x is greater than 6 minus 4 is 2. But now what's going to happen is I have to divide by this coefficient, just like I did in the previous example. But if we divide by a negative, it's going to change the sign. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And if I divide by a negative, it's going to change the sign on that side as well. Negatives will change the sign. Well, what I have to remember when I divide by a negative or even multiply by a negative, which would also change the sign, I have to remember to always change the sign. That's the only difference. Because an equal sign, if you switch it around, it's still an equal sign. An inequality, when I change the signs using multiplication or division with a negative, I have to change the sign. I have to flip it around. So it's kind of a redundant statement, but maybe it'll help you to remember. If you multiply and divide to change signs, change the sign. All right, so here, negative 2 over negative 2 is a positive 1. Positive over a negative is a negative 1. So the inequality, now that I switch the sign, it says x is less than negative 1. So if I choose a value that's less than negative 1, it better make this statement true. So I'm going to pick a value less than negative 1, let's say negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 4, or negative 2, is a positive 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. Is 8 greater than 6? 8 is greater than 6. That's a true statement. So I know the values less than negative 1 are true in this statement. And then uh, in the previous video, we talked about writing it in set notation, graphical notation, and interval notation. We can do that. And we will see that in other examples. This here is called algebraic notation. All right, so let's look at uh, something we've already done here. This was the example we used at the beginning of uh, part one's video. x is greater than 5. And we wrote it in set notation. Set notation is just taking this value and giving it its braces with x such that, this symbol here, x such that x is greater than 5. Let's do the same thing with that last example. We had x is less than negative 1. Well, if I want to write that in set notation, I just have to use the proper notation. A brace with an x such that, and then I just take this value and bring it into the notation. And then I close my brace. So now I have it in set notation. Now, if I want to graph it, we know that our number line is from least to greatest, left to right. And I could say, well, 
I'm going to put negative 1 right here. This says x is less than negative 1. So I have to find the values of x such that x is less than negative 1. So <clears throat> because it does not include the value, I'm going to use a parenthesis. And x being less than is any value to the left. So now I've graphed it. This is graphical notation for x less than negative 1. If I want to write it in interval notation, well, I can start right here. And notice my parentheses. I just bring it down. It faces the, the way I need it to at the value negative 1. Where does that arrow go off to? Well, it goes off to negative infinity. And I use a parentheses because it's negative infinity. Now, when I read this, it is from left to right. The least value, negative infinity, is far less than negative 1 from least to greatest. So we always write our intervals from least to greatest using the proper notation, whether it's parentheses or brackets if it includes the value. All right, <clears throat> let's look at some examples where we have to solve them algebraically, just like we just did. We have negative 5x is less than 20. So whatever x is, it has to be uh, negative 5 times that value would have to be less than 20. So to undo this, I treat it just like an equation. And I say, OK, I have to get x by itself. So I have to divide by this coefficient. I have to undo that multiplication. Now, when I divide by this negative, a negative over a negative will become a positive. The sign will change. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. I'm taking a positive and dividing it by a negative. The sign will change. 20 divided by a negative 5 is a negative 4. Because I divided by a negative, the sign's changed. I have to remember to change the sign. x is greater than negative 4. And if I wanted to graph that, I could draw a number line and say, OK, here's negative 4. x is any value greater. Greater tells me to the right on the number line. And since negative 4 is not included, I use a parenthesis. And any value to the right is greater than negative 4. If I want to write that in interval notation, I can look at my graph and say, OK, I used a parenthesis at negative 4. And that arrow goes off to infinity. And I put infinity into a parenthesis. All right, and that's your answer. So let's move on to this one here. Well, this one has parentheses. Well, when we had an equation with parentheses, we'd use distribution or, or whatever we needed to to eliminate the parentheses. We do the exact same thing here. I'm going to distribute 3 to both values in the parentheses, 3 times 5x and 3 times negative 4. Here I can eliminate those parentheses with distribution, 4 times 3x, 4 times negative 2. And now we want to get our x's on one side and our numbers on the other. So I'm going to move this value by subtracting 12x's from that side. And what I do over there, I'm going to do over here. And I get 3x minus 12 is less than or equal to negative 8, because you know, the, that value goes away, of course. And now I can add 12 to both sides. And I'm just going to do it this way, add 12, and I'm going to get a positive 4. And now I can undo this multiplication using division. Now, because it's positive, the signs aren't going to change. This side's positive, that side's positive. And after I do my division of 3, they're still positive. The signs didn't change. So I don't have to change any signs. So this is algebraic notation. If I want to write it in set notation, x such that x is less than or equal to 4 thirds, I can use braces. And then I could continue on, and I could graph it like we did the last example. And I could write it in interval notation. Let's uh, skip the graphing, and let's just write it in interval notation. If x is less than or equal to 4 thirds, I know it's equal to 4 thirds. So my 4 thirds, I'm going to put a bracket around it. Since x is less than, x is going to be to the left. It includes 4 thirds. And to the left, any value to the left of that is going to go to negative infinity. And I enclose that with a parenthesis. So we have set notation and interval notation. And we could graph it, but we'll skip that point for now. Here we have 5, 6, x is greater than or equal to negative 8. Well, to undo this, since I have a fraction, I can multiply by its reciprocal. 
just like I would in an equation. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. So here we say the 6 over 6 would reduce to 1. The 5 over 5 would reduce to 1. Since this side is positive to begin with, and after my multiplication it's still positive, I don't have to change any sign. The signs remain the same. This side's negative. A negative times positive will remain negative. So I'll get negative 48 fifths. Now, this one we're going to put on a graph. Well, actually, let's make it set notation first. Set notation is essentially taking our answer and using the proper notation. And graphical notation, sometimes when it's fractions, we have to think about it. And sometimes it's easier to think about it in terms of a mixed number. 5 goes into 48 nine times. So this would be negative 9 with a remainder of 3, negative 9 and 3 fifths. So if I'm writing the graph, if I say, OK, well, this is negative 9 and this is negative 10, we're actually on our way this way. Actually, let me move this down here. If this is negative 10 and this is negative 9, this value being negative 9 and 3 fifths, that's going to be somewhere in between the 9 and 10 in the negative direction. And since it's equal, I'm going to use a bracket. So this value here would be negative 9 and 3 fifths. That's what that indicates. And since x is greater than or equal to this value, greater than tells me it goes off to the right. And now we can write that in interval notation. We have a bracket at my negative 9 and 3 fifths, which is negative 48 fifths. And either way is acceptable, whether you leave it as an improper fraction or a mixed number. Either way is fine. And that arrow goes off to positive infinity, where I use a parenthesis. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is something called a compound inequality. Sometimes we're able to find values of an x that are in between two values. And this and statement is something that we should focus in on. It directs my attention to say, whatever values I find, it has to solve this one and this one. So it has to solve both of these statements. Well, if we think about what this says, let's actually put it on a graph so we can visualize it. If we have negative 3 and positive 8, this says x is greater than negative 3. Well, greater than would be any value to the right. This says x is less than or equal to 8. So it includes the value 8. And any value less than would be to the left. What solutions would make this true uh, would be anything in between these values. So if I wrote it in interval notation, parentheses at negative 3, and a bracket at 8, there's our interval notation. Well, because these values, negative 3, is less than 8, just as we wrote it from left to right, what I can do is I can combine these two inequalities because it's an AND statement. Write these values from left to right. x lies in between them. Where x is greater than negative 3, that means negative 3 is less than x. If I could write this on a piece of glass and lift it off the board and turn it around, you would actually see this statement. Negative 3 is less than x instead of x greater than negative 3. They mean the same thing. And that statement, if, if you look here, it's actually the same statement. x is less than or equal to 8. Now, one way to check to see if we wrote it correctly is assess, is this value less than that value? Yes, negative 3 is less than 8. Another way to check it is just cover up this middle statement does that make a true statement? Is negative 3 less than or equal to 8? Well, yes, negative 3 is less than 8. If I cover up this side, is negative 3 less than 8? Still a true statement. So that's one way to check if you wrote your compound inequality correctly. Now, what I want you to do with this compound inequality is I want you to graph it and then write your answer in interval notation. So this one I'll leave for you. Now, sometimes we have uh, compound inequalities that aren't simplified, that x is not all alone in the middle. So what we have to do is use our properties of equality, like we've learned before, to solve this. But instead of having two sides of the equation, we actually have three sides. We have the left, the center, and the right. 
So what I have to do to one side, I have to do to all sides. So to get this x by itself, I'm going to have to subtract 4 from this side and this side and that side. What I do to 1, I have to do to all sides. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3, is less than negative 1 half x, is less than or equal to 5 minus 4 is 1. Now I have this coefficient of negative 1 half. Well, when we had the fraction that we saw like 5, 6 times x, we multiplied by its reciprocal. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply this by the reciprocal of negative 1 half, which is a negative 2 over 1, or just negative 2. What I do to 1, I have to do to all the others. Now, since I'm multiplying by a negative, I know, hey, this was a negative value. A negative times a negative is going to make it positive. I had a sign change because I multiplied by a negative. Well, if that's the case, this was negative. If I multiply by a negative, now it's positive. This is a positive times a negative. Well, now it's negative. So these signs, because all my signs changed, these signs also have to change. So I just flip them around. Instead of being less than, now it's greater than. Instead of being less than or equal to, now it's greater than or equal to. But there's a problem. Because our intervals must be written from least to greatest. Well, if I look at this, 6 is greater than negative 2. I have to rearrange this equation. And if, like I had said before, if this was on a piece of glass, if I could just pick it up and look at it from the other side, well, essentially it would be negative 2 being less than x or equal to. And this 6 is greater than x, which means x is less than. 6, now we finally have it in the proper algebraic notation. If I wanted to put it in set notation, I just add my braces and x such that this is a true statement. If I wanted to uh, graph it, and I'll do that right here, I have my value of negative 2. I have my value of 6. At negative 2, it can include it. But x is greater than that value. Here I have 6. It doesn't include it. x is less than that value. So the area in between, just like x lies in between those values, is the values that make this a true statement. And lastly, I can write it in interval notation. If we have the graph writing in an interval notation, we can just pull it right from the graph. A bracket at negative 2, a parenthesis at 6 and we put them together. All right, here's another example, very similar to the last one. Treat it just like an equation and solve this. I want you to write it in uh, set notation, graph it, and write the final answer in interval notation, all three representations of the solution. So this, uh, we have one more example, and it is an application. And I'm going to clear some board space here so we have room to work. All right, so we have uh, this scenario. To get an A minus in your class, your exam average needs to be more than 90 and less than or equal to 92, according to maybe your instructor's grading scale. You currently have grades of 89, 93, and 85 on exams. What grade do you need on the final to get an A minus overall? All right, well, let's think about the keywords. If we read it again, I see we have more than, which tells me an inequality, and less than or equal to. So if I just write these symbols in here, more than, well, uh, that would be this symbol here. And that's a key that I'm going to highlight there, less than or equal to. Well, if we look at the values, something has to be more than 90. And something has to be less than or equal to 92. x is less than or equal to 92. And because it's an and statement, this is what we have to find. Now, if I read further, it says you have grades of 89, 93, and 85. It says, what do you need on the final? Well, what are we actually looking for overall? 
The keyword is right there, average. So we're just breaking it apart, saying, what's given? Well, I'm told I have to find an average. I am told what my range of grade can be. And I'm given these exam scores. Well, to find an average, I add up the values I have, 89, 93, and 85. But this isn't my total grade. To find the total grade, I have to know what I get on the final. Well, I don't know what that is right now. So I'm going to add a value x. So this is my three grades I currently have. And this is what I want to get on the final so that I get that a minus I wanted in the class. Now, to find an average, we sum them up and we divide it by the number of numbers. Well, I have one, two, three grades plus one more coming up for a total of four. Now, whatever this value is, it has to be greater than 90 and less than or equal to 92 to achieve my goal. So I can just fill those in. If, if we think about it, our variable, which is contained in here, is greater than 90, which means 90 is less than that value. And here, this value, whatever it may be, has to be uh, less than or equal to 92 so that I fall within that range. Now here, we can just do this sum and treat it just like an equation. To get rid of a fraction in an equation, we can multiply through by 4. And then we can simplify. So I'm actually going to leave it at this point up to you to calculate that through. So this has been section 6.5, Solving Linear Inequalities. Thank you for watching.